will be doing a talk on game design, thinking for civic engagement. Libby Falk is a graduate student and researcher at MIT and the founder of Forward Labs, a civic technology and consulting firm that specializes in applying educational game design to grassroots organizing. She is here to answer the question, it says, how might games better enable individuals to connect with and contribute to the social movements they care about? Thanks, everybody. Um, so yes, my name is Libby. Um, I'm going to be sharing some of the research that I've been doing for the last two years for my master's at MIT and some of the next steps. Um, so first I'll give you a little bit of background. Um, I come from a more nonprofit media and education space. Um, started a, a nonprofit doing sort of STEM um, related story based curriculum development um, back in 2012 and um, increasingly wanted to move more and more into the civics and a civic literacy space. And I'll talk a little bit more about why. Um, but these are just some of the things that I've done over the years. Um, was an AmeriCorps member. Um, I very much appreciate being part of those spaces. Uh, so what I started to see as I dug into this, this question of, of how do local governments use civic technologies um, was again and again, I, I saw this problem. Um, so I worked with a small social movement organization Wisconsin United to Amend. I'm from Wisconsin, that's where I did a lot of my um, graduate research. And they're this amazing little volunteer run organization um, working on campaign finance reform. They've got about 8,000 people on their um, email list, which is great, but they've only got like, 20 or 30 people who come to their meetings every month. And most of those people are, are of retirement age. And so they're constantly asking, like, how do we, how do we mobilize all of these people? email list, how do we get more young people involved? And as I delve deeper and deeper into this space, this is something that I was just seeing across the board, from tiny little volunteer run organizations like Wisconsin United to Amend, to massive, very well-funded national organizations. And so I really started to look at the technologies that these orgs were using to, to engage and mobilize people, and how did they work, and how are they not working? And so what I started to see was there's this sort of divide between what we, what we might call institutional and participatory approaches to mobilization and to civic engagement. And by civic engagement, I simply mean, like I, I use that term very broadly. It could be you know, volunteering with an environmental cleanup project, it could be voting, or it could be doing advocacy work. Um, institutional approaches, um, some of you may be familiar with. Uh, it's a lot of do donation emails that are sent out. Um, I met one person who told me he got six donation emails from a single organization in one day. Um, and this is really standard practice for a lot of organizations. And it's an important piece of the puzzle, but it's not the whole puzzle. <laughs> the other part that I saw less was this more participatory approach. And what this means is this builds off of, um, in, in media studies we call a participatory culture. How do people repurpose um, narratives? How do they use fan fiction as a way to engage people with issues they, they care about? And one really interesting example of this is called the Harry Potter Alliance. Uh, they're a nonprofit based in LA. Uh, they do work all around the world and they basically use the, the fictional world of Harry Potter to engage young people in um, organizing work. So it's like this, you know, we, we can talk about house elves' rights, but like let's also talk about other people's rights in our world. And it's really, really been a successful model. So what I think is we need both of these things. The weird thing is we don't have a lot of tools that support both of these things. So I think of it very much as this idea of uh, your institutional, very donation focused, is giving people a small number of things that they can do to participate in, in a movement or in a cause that they care about versus participatory engagement. So if anyone is familiar with the state of Wisconsin, anybody? Anybody else from, oh, oh, yes, a couple of hands, excellent. So a few years ago, we um, tried to teach our governor, um, Scott Walker. And so this was a very popular costume and meme that came about. This is the Imperial Walker from Star Wars, and people would dress up in these costumes and make these memes and walk around and start a conversation about how 
the Imperial not Walker never stops, and, and really, <coughs> we're trying to make it fun. Like, there were actually people blasting Star Wars themed music in our state capitol during our protests. And this is something we see a lot in movements, but not a lot in their digital strategy. So, I mentioned the tools that people use. I did an assessment of about 20 different tools that are used by social movement organizations and individuals, and they almost all fall into this more institutional side of the picture. We're gonna send you an email, if you're lucky, maybe you'll get to like sign a petition. Um, maybe there'll be a, an event you can attend, but if you live in a small town in Wisconsin, like the town where I grew up, there's probably not gonna be an event, and there's not gonna be that many things you can do. So how do we come up with more participatory, playful, bottom-up ways to engage with the causes that we care about? So what I ended up, um, the, the way I ended up thinking about this is this idea of game design I'm not the first person to use this term. It's used in a few different ways by a few different people. Um, Eric Gordon, in particular, at the Engagement Lab, who'll be talking tomorrow, he also talks about this in a slightly different way. Um, the way I think about it is like basically games are a great way to help people engage with really complex systems. And social movements and civic engagement are really complex systems. So how do we create ways, entry ways for people to do that? Um, so this is what I wrote my master's thesis on, is how can we specifically think about the way that games work, the way games onboard people into new worlds um, and create actions for them to complete, and apply that to this idea of grassroots organizing, or more generally, civic engagement. I have kind of gone back and forth between, <laughs> between those terms. Um, and so there's, there's six lessons I'm gonna share here, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the game that I ended up developing, um, and we'll be piloting this this summer so you can get a little sense of how I'm trying to put this into practice. So the first thing is offer choices. This seems very simple. Games give you a lot of different things that you can do. A lot of time, as I mentioned, um, the tools that we have for civic engagement, they don't give us a lot of different options. So we need to create technology that can support that. Um, and not only support more options from above, but more options from participants um, coming up with their own ideas and adding them to the options that others can do. The second is scaffolding, scaffolding learning. Um, so I specifically uh, did a lot of research on educational game design. And so um, in the field of education, we talk about the zone of proximal development. Many game designers in here are probably familiar with this idea. That basically that you don't want to send somebody straight to the boss fight, like you want to give them some other practice opportunities before they get there. How do we build that into our systems? What I see with a lot of um, social movement organizations is step one is like, tweet this. Like, okay, I got it, I can tweet this. Step two is like, get 20 of your friends together and start a local chapter. And there, <laughs> there's no real in-between space there. And there's so much opportunity to create that. The next piece is um, creating opportunities for play and expression. This kind of goes back to this idea of the Imperial Walker. These more playful things, the Harry Potter Alliance, how can we pull in popular culture and playfulness to make this type of thing a little bit more fun? And I think that a lot of organizations are getting actually quite good at this. There's a lot of different fun runs you can go to to support causes you care about, um, but there could be more. There could be a lot. Fourth, providing feedback to your players. Pretty important thing. Uh, this is pretty rare in <laughs> a lot of the technologies that I've looked at. Um, and I think that particularly in the context of civic engagement, that feedback um, is most powerful when it comes from your peers and other people in your community. Um, so really building peer communities that provide feedback and can help with learning. Fifth, like I just said, building community. Um, again, looking, um, at research that has been done on learning in World of Warcraft, you can see that there's really uh, interesting things that happen where more experienced players, well, novice players, learn the ropes of the game. And this has been like research. It always amazes me. I, I just did this master's program for two years after being out of school for about 10 years. And it always amazes me like what people can spend their time researching. <laughs> and I love that somebody was able to look at well, peer learning in World um, and then finally, six is uh, crowdsourcing. I think that games like Fold It, if you're familiar with it, 
um, various uh, citizen science games, games that allow us to collect information, um, to collect ideas, are could be really powerful in this space. Um, even if you take the game part out of it, this is probably the number one thing that I'm most excited about for the space of civic engagement. How can we crowdsource more ways for people to participate? So, those are the six things. And I'm gonna go now into what this game project that I'm working on looks like. Can you ask a question? Nothing. Nothing. There's no order. And, and these are relatively arbitrarily chosen. Um, I could probably have chosen like 10 things or, you know, three things. These were just the things that popped out to me when I was putting this together. So, uh, you know, I have not like written the, if you want to read the book on this, you can read my thesis, which I, I don't expect any of you to do. <laughs> um, so, game design thinking for civic engagement. <laughs> what does this look like? Um, so for the last year, I've been running a whole bunch of different playtests. I've done 17 different playtests, paper prototyping, ideas around how we can put game design into practice for engaging people with local democracy. And what I was particularly hung up on was the idea of location-based games. And looking at games like Pokemon Go, and I remember playing it, and I'd be walking to the office, and I'd see this statue, in, I got to see what I'm going to get here. Like this is my this is my main pokey stop, and I love the way that games like that um, use the physical components of your environment to get you thinking about the game. And if you're thinking about local government and local democracy, uh, how interesting would it be if you could make that work for learning about a local issue uh, or participating in a local action? So that's kind of the direction that I took with these prototypes. And what came out of it is this game called Forward. Forward is uh, the state motto for Wisconsin, if any of you didn't know that. And this is piloting in Wisconsin. Um, but it also really talks about this idea of um, thinking about the future. I was trying to come up with a story that would be inclusive, um, that would to the best of my ability, not be super partisan. Um, and so what I ended up focusing on is this idea of participatory futurism. So how do you get a bunch of people to come together and think about the future they want? We're really good at thinking about the futures we don't want and talking about those. How do we come up with those alternatives and have conversations about them? So these were kind of my two motivating things location-based thing, thinking about positive futures, how do we do it? So, addressing America's crisis of civic engagement with time-traveling laser class cats was the solution that I came to, at least for this summer. <coughs> so basically I'm thinking, how do we take an idea like Pokemon Go and create a civic engagement game for people ages 13 to 23? Um, it's uh, open to people, anybody over the age of 13, that just kind of been the target. Uh, and what I will do now is I'm just going to show you the quick little intro video to the story that, um, let me know if it has any typos, I would love to know that. Um, so I'll play that now. Thank you. 
been a wild adventure. Um, these are the three goals that I have for this summer's pilot. Um, I would like to be able to personalize engagement. If you like to sew, how can I give you things that you can do to support a cause you care about that require sewing? Um, things along those lines. Um, all of it's place-based, well not all of it. There are many things you can do from anywhere, but a lot of it is place-based. So you might go and check in and look for you know, a meme that's been tagged in a particular location, check into it, you get catnips for that. Um, the next is building civic literacy. I didn't go into this too much in this talk, but civic literacy in this country is scary. It's like one in four people in America can name all three branches of the federal government. And our uh, educational standards for civics are atrocious. I think eight states have none. Um, there was an assessment of 32 and almost no state, none of those 32 states had any experiential components to their civics education, which is why it's not surprising that people don't understand how government works. And they particularly don't understand how city and county government works. And that's the focus for this game. Um, in Wisconsin, our, our city councilmen are called aldermen. Um, most people don't know what an alderman is, let alone who their representative is. So at a very basic level, can a player in this game, like through a mission to get a selfie with your alderman, learn what that means and what they do? Um, and then the third piece is raising awareness for local organizations. Um, I saw that a lot of, in a lot of the focus groups I did with high school students, they'd be like, oh, I, I care about animals. <coughs> and you're like, oh, who's, you know, who in the community is working on that? And they couldn't come up with an organization. So the third piece is how can this game just help players learn this organization is working on you know, um, this social justice issue, this organization is working on climate change, um, and take a first step toward engaging with them. So those are the three goals that I'm looking to test this summer. Um, it may have gone by a little too fast. These are the organizations that I'm, I'm partnering with kind of broadly fall into these four categories, which are all kind of lumped together based on the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals, um, really trying to make this nonpartisan, um, and we'll see how that goes in uh, my very conservative hometown this summer. Um, but we will be running this five-week pilot, uh, and I have a lot to build before July 3rd, um, so I, I may skip out on part of tomorrow <laughs> to work on that. Um, but uh, generally the idea for this is to move toward building more platforms, and more games that can engage people with local we need a lot more energy in this space. Um, I'd love to find more collaborators, more partners, people interested in this work to talk to, um, figure out where it goes next. I just graduated, um, and basically my, my life plan is like see what happens with this. Um, so if anybody has ideas for me, please do let me know. Uh, <laughs> this is the website. Um, you can also reach me directly at libby at forwardlabs.io. Uh, thank you very much for, for listening. Yay!